In this video, I'm going to talk about something in travel that I don't think gets talked about enough, but gives you such an amazing opportunity to explore the world. Today, I'm going to talk about working holiday visas. My name is Tristan Powell, and I am the Yonderpreneur. I help people learn to live financially and geographically for your lives. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. So what is a working holiday visa? Well, a working holiday visa is a type of visa that allows young people, usually between 18 and 30, sometimes 35, depends on the country, to allow you and go and live in a different country for an extended period of time, usually up to a year. It's an awesome opportunity for people who want to go and live in another country beyond the usual tourist length, 90 days, one month. You know how everyone always says, oh, it's different when you actually live there. Well, here's your opportunity to say, I actually lived there. Working holiday visas are some of the most popular visas out there because they give you that access to be more than just a tourist. You now become a temporary resident which basically just means you're allowed to live and work like a local. Working holiday visas are also a great way to get some international experience to put on your resume. So how do you apply for one of these visas? Well, it differs depending on what country you're applying for, but here are some general steps that you should think about. Step one is to check your eligibility because each country has their own different age requirements, and perhaps nationality requirements. Some countries won't allow you to go if you're a citizen of this country. So just make sure that you are eligible before you do any applying. The next step is to apply online. Most of the time, the application procedure will be partially online. Most of the time, you'll also have to go in for an interview. But you can get the forms and have your documents ready before you go for an in-person interview. You can get that all done online first. The third step is getting your health and your insurance checked. By that I mean most of the countries will actually make you do a doctor's check before you're accepted into the visa. For example, when I came to Japan, I had to go to my doctor and get a clean bill of health just to make sure I wouldn't be a drag on the Japanese healthcare system. There's also a visa application fee. All the countries will charge this, but it's usually a non-substantial amount. For example, it was 25 Canadian dollars for me to apply for my working holiday visa for Japan. And once again, some countries, but not all countries, might actually require you to have health insurance also. I had health insurance provided by one of my banks for the first three months in Japan, but after that, I've just been on the national health insurance and it hasn't been an issue. But some countries may require you to have a full health insurance coverage for the length of your stay in that country. Also, some countries will require you to have proof of funds, which is pretty much, do you have some money in your bank account? Just in case you get to the country, you don't work, you run out of money and then you become a burden. So they want to try and avoid that situation. There are a lot of countries around the world that do the working holiday agreement, but the go-to ones are usually, you know, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada is very popular also, Japan, uh, South Korea, the UK, Ireland, and Germany. So like I said earlier in this video, I am currently living in Japan on a working holiday visa. I didn't actually know about these visas until recently. Even though I'm, you know, Mr. Travel, investing visas, I'm usually on top of these things. I didn't actually know about them until quite recently. I remember I was creating content in Quito, Ecuador. You may remember my $250 apartment video. That was interesting to say the least. But while I was doing that, I came across an ad on Instagram that said, come to Japan and ski all winter. I actually love skiing. I've been skiing since I was a child. One of my things that I really want to do on my bucket list was to ski in Japan. Mark Zuckerberg probably read my mind and then targeted ads towards me. Anyways, I was just finishing my six month trip through Latin America and I was not looking forward to going back to Canada, but I was also kind of done with the, as you could say, laissez-faire or the complete lack of rules that you can often find in Latin America. So going to a country like Japan, where things are very culturally different, started sounding really appealing to me. And don't get me wrong, South America, Latin America, it's amazing. Definitely go. 
It's just I needed a little bit of balance, everything in moderation. The whole kind of laissez-faire, uh, ruleless way of living, great, amazing, but I wanted a little bit more structure in my life. So Japan was a perfect option. Since I would be in Japan for longer than the limited 90 days that you are allowed to be there as a tourist, and since I was actually going there to work, I needed a different kind of visa than a tourist visa. And so I had to apply for this working holiday visa. And it's been an incredible time here. The people I met, the places I've been, the adventures I went on, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Of course, there are some things you have to consider though. One thing that is very important to think about before moving or doing a working holiday visa is accommodation. I was lucky enough that my work, my first six months living in Japan, provided me with accommodation. But I've also been in a situation, like when I lived in the Netherlands, where I had to live in a hostel for the first two months of living there. And that sucked. So do your research beforehand and try and find accommodation before you get there, if you can. I know it is difficult, but there are ways to do it. If you're moving to Tokyo, you also want to make sure you find someone that will rent to foreigners. It is very common here for the Japanese to be frightened or adverse to renting their apartments to foreigners but there are lots of agents out there who will even work specifically only for foreigners just gotta know the right people to talk to if you aren't already previously wealthy or you don't have an online job you will have to find a job job hunting is i'd say the second most important thing when moving abroad or getting on a working holiday visa similar to finding somewhere to stay finding a job is best done before you get to the country it can be difficult but it can be done there are lots of good job boards and resources to get that done for people on working holiday visas if you're coming to japan and you don't have a job already lined up gaijin pot which I'll link down below, is a good website to try and find a job. It is a job board that is specifically for foreigners coming to Japan. I'm not affiliated with them or sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. It's just something that's come in handy for me in Japan. I use that to also find my apartment. I also use Gaijin Pot to find a job. It's been a trusty sidekick for me during my stay. Another thing to consider is the language barriers. Going to Australia from Canada, not a big deal. Going to New Zealand, to the UK, not a big deal. However, going from Canada to Japan can be tricky. I don't speak Japanese, I've been working on it, but you can take this as an opportunity to try and learn a new language and improve your language speaking abilities. For example, I got my trusty Genki book right here, and I've been practicing Japanese since I've been here. Uh, not too seriously, but enough to learn some basics just to survive. Another thing to consider when going abroad on a working holiday visa is navigating new systems. What do I mean by systems? That's your banking, that's your cell phone plan, that's your rent, that's your health insurance. All these things need to be changed when you get to a new country. And there's many ways to do these. In Japan, it's quite difficult. You need a cell phone number to get a bank account, but you need a bank account to get a cell phone number. All very complicated. However, these are things that I can help you with, with Yonderpreneur. At the moment, I'm only doing Japan, but I hope to expand to more countries eventually. So to have a successful working holiday visa experience, do these things. Do your research, number one. Number two, plan your finances. Number three, network. Lots of Facebook groups and Telegram groups and Instagram groups and whatever else there is of people and expats in that country already. Uh, learn the language just a little bit. It will go, it will do you miles and the locals really appreciate it. And the last thing, stay flexible. You never know what's going to happen on your trips. So just, you, got, you have to go with the flow. If you have any questions, or you have done a working holiday visa before and you want to share your experience, put it in the comments below. That is all for now. My name is Tristan, the Yonderpreneur. I help people become more geographically and financially free. If you want help, don't hesitate to reach out to me on x.com or at yonderpreneur.com, my website. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.